What's up everybody? Today we're talking about how to make objects look like they're floating and no Hogwarts required. That's a, that's a terrible joke. It's, it sounded better when I, yeah, intro. <laughs> Okay, there's a few ways to do this. There's a really easy way. You just take like 200 photos until you get the one you like. Or if you're in a studio or a house, your apartment, your loft, your flat, your school, your kitchen and whatever. There's a couple things you can buy to make it easier. Tape, fishing line, command hooks, bathtub rod. So what do you do with all these objects? Essentially, we're trying to make an object look like it's floating. Like I said earlier, you can literally toss it up a bunch of times and with a camera that has a really fast shutter, you can just snap that photo until you're happy with what you get. Sometimes Sometimes that's what I do if I'm outside and I have nowhere to hang something. I'll just throw it up in the air 200 times until I get one that I like. Done. A bit time consuming. Now for those of us who want to put a little more time into it and control the atmosphere and the overall outlook of the photo, you can hang it. And then you go into Photoshop after and you whoop, Photoshop out that fishing line. Okay, if you don't have anywhere to hang something, use the bathtub rod, extend it, stick it between two walls, stick it between a door frame, stick it between whatever something so that you have an anchor point to tie and hang some fishing line. If you don't want to do the bathtub rod, you can buy these command hooks. Just grab some fishing line, thread it through that command hook, put that sticky tab on it, stick it to the ceiling, stick it to your door frame, pull on it just to make sure it's tight, good to go. Let's just say because I'm obsessed with coffee, we're gonna float, you guessed it, a coffee mug. Tie the fishing line to the mug, make sure it's not gonna fall. Add a little bit of coffee to that mug for realism because hey, Details matter, and we're all about details here. And then just make sure it hangs and doesn't fall. Stand in front of it, take a photo. You can do that with the self-timer, or you can do it with a remote. A remote's nice and easy because you can wait until that object spins to the right angle, and then just snap the photo with your remote. You're good to go. Your object is now floating. Boom, no dark arts required. Still not funny, is it? No. Okay, we're almost there. You can't post the photo yet because it looks stupid with that fishing line visible. Unless that's what you're into and you think that's cool, then, you know, art is subjective. Have at it. But we're gonna get rid of that fishing line. I'm gonna show you guys how. Okay, everybody, you're gonna pull those images into Lightroom. Pick the one you like. So let's cycle through a few of these and check out our options. That's a pretty cool one. I'll five star that, hit number five on your keyboard. That's a cool one, I dig that one. I'll five star that on my keyboard. I think this one looks pretty cool. That might be my favorite. So you know what, I'll change these back to four because this one's my favorite. Ah, that one's pretty cool too, boom. I like these two, so we're gonna work with those. So you come in here, do your quick color correction. Let's pump the exposure up a little bit. Let's bring those highlights down. A little more black, a little higher on the whites. That clarity, look at that clarity. So from zero, you slide that up. See the contrast that brings in? That's pretty cool. Let's do a little bit of that. This is looking pretty good. Okay, so after you have done your edits on this that you like, you can go to the next photo in Lightroom and hit previous and it'll do all the same edits to that photo. So now you've got both of these that we like. Let's highlight both of those and export them into our folder, we're gonna hit desktop, make stuff float, boom, choose, and export. Okay, so now we gotta hop into Photoshop and piece out that fishing line. Unless, like I said, you wanna keep that in there, but we're gonna get rid of it. Super easy, don't freak out. I know people are probably like, oh, I've never used, like I don't, way easier than you think. You're gonna be like, oh my God, what else can I get rid of in photos? This is a big tip, you're gonna love this. Okay. So now we're in Photoshop. We're gonna grab our two photos. Let's start with, let's start with this one. That's a good one. Drag that into Photoshop and boop, here we are. This is what's cool about the Band-Aid tool. You're gonna come over here, spot healing brush, the Band-Aid. For those of you who've never done this, I'm about to blow your mind. Check this out. Grab the spot healing Band-Aid tool. It's this one right here. Click on this, hold it down, drag all the way down to here, let go. Oh my goodness, that fishing line is gone. So already it's looking pretty cool. We just gotta get rid of the rest of the fishing line. So we're gonna do it in stages. Sometimes it can get tricky. Like for example, 
see this area right here. here I'll get the brush tool so you guys can see. see this area right here. It's a little harder to do because we've got the difference of contrast between the wall and my shirt. This is a horrible, horrible mess, but we can still do that. We're just gonna make the brush size a little bigger. Make the brush size right about there, gone. Just like that, it's gone. This, it's magic. I don't know how else to explain it. That is pure magic. You literally click on something, it's gone. It's amazing, it blows my mind. I love using Photoshop. Okay, so we gotta get rid of the rest of this. One thing to point out, don't get ahead of yourself. You don't wanna get rid of the whole fishing line at once because if you do that, look at this. Ah! What just happened? A little bit too much to process there. We gotta go bit by bit. Now when we get to the wall, we're gonna bring that brush size down a little bit. And we're gonna go little by little. We don't need to go overkill and do a ton, just a little bit at a time. Don't do the whole thing at once. It's not gonna look as good as you think it will. Don't get excited, I know it's easy. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Come up here, a little bit at a time. Baby steps, people. Baby steps. Oh, look at this, look at that. We are painting away the past to make way for the future. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Just get in here with the shadow. Boop, okay. That fishing line, ladies and gentlemen, is just about completely gone. We get that little knot on the end of the cup to get rid of, not to worry. A Little bit at a time, paint that away. It's so easy when black is the background too, by the way, ugh. Let's just get rid of that to here. Boom, boom, we're just clicking. We're doing baby steps, folks. Just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit more. Mm. Look at that. That's the most insane thing I've ever seen. Now you have a floating cup and no explanation for it. Now we'll add some more creative edits. We're gonna get into this in another tutorial, but we'll dress up the photo a little more. Fast forward here so you can see it. Okay, remember that lens distortions app I told you guys to download in order to take better iPhone photos? You can use the same thing on your desktop. You go through, you find the lens distortions, you pick a light hit, anything you want. I like this light hit 30. You drag it into Photoshop, you zoom out, you make it the size that you want, you hit enter, you come down, you hit that play button and boom, beautiful light hit. The window's on the left side here, so we're gonna have that coming in from the left because it doesn't make sense if it's coming in from the right. So we're coming in from the left here. Nice little light flare, looks dope. Bring that in a bit more, perfect. Pump that saturation a little bit more, that contrast. Ooh wee, that's looking moody. F to preview, F to preview again. Command plus to make that full screen and look at that. That's pretty cool. And all we used was some fishing line, a command hook and a couple quick edits in Photoshop. You post that online and people are gonna be like, wait, what? You can throw it up a bunch of times. But if you've got coffee in a mug and you're throwing that in the air to get a photo, you know what, tag me in that, I'd love to see it. <laughs> we got the before, with that big line there. And then we got the after. How cool is that? How cool is that? Before, zip, it's magic. Before, zip, I could do that all day. Look at that, woo. Not too bad, you guys just learned a new skill today. I wanna see stuff floating, tag me. So there you have it. You can now float objects in your photos. Get creative with this. Maybe you're doing engagement shoots for a couple. You can float both the rings with both of their hands. That's a good idea, you're welcome. Coffee connoisseur, float a coffee mug. Float a deck of cards, that seems to be a recurring theme. Float anything you want. You can actually go to Walmart and buy command hooks that can hold up to 20 pounds. So maybe a cool idea is taking a portrait of somebody and having them float that very portrait in a frame in the photo. That's cool. All right, that's it for me today. If you like this video, hit that like button, share it, whatever you want. Comment, what are you gonna float? We'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Peace. You guys ever notice I do this a lot? I talk with my hands a lot. Like, I feel like it would be so weird if I just stood there like, we're gonna talk about floating objects today. You can float a coffee mug, you can, ah, can't do it.